I know why you're here, High Elf. I can teach you the ways, but you must listen closely. Welcome to the Shrine of the Adoring Fan. Today, we will not be discussing one necromancy path, but two. The role-playing one and the tactical one. One to just have fun and pretend, and the other to beat the game on maximum difficulty. We shall start with the role-playing. The necromancer who just doesn't know what to do with his life. You will be a high elf under the apprentice sign to give you as much weakness to destruction as possible. You will be becoming part undead after all. Your attributes will be intelligence and willpower. This is to give you as much magic as possible. You will use a magic specialization, of course, with intelligence and willpower as your attributes. Your seven skills are alchemy, blade, conjuration, illusion, mysticism, restoration, and speechcraft. You will be playing as good or evil, but no matter what, go to the mages of Coral for the conjuration spells that you want. When you are a role-playing necromancer, it's very important to remember that your blade skill comes from embalming. So use an elven dagger. If you can get wit splinter, go for it. If you want your own, that's fine too. Make sure that you only conjure undead. You will have the alchemy skill. That's because before you figured out you wanted to be a necromancer, you did try to conjure up other things like armor and knives and, of course, Atronox. And you're going to have a lot of different ingredients from Atronox and undead laying around. And, of course, you picked up potion making, because why would you waste that? Illusion is there for command creature, and it helps you build your undead army because you can command a creature and it can be an undead that's fine mysticism is there for soul trapping it fits the theme of being a necromancer you need to be able to make black soul gems if you want to take it a step further only use black soul gems for recharging and enchanting restoration is there for two main purposes one is to keep yourself from becoming an undead or dead yourself and the other is to heal your undead even though you can use Conjuration to summon them and even make them run away, it's still more effective to heal a zombie and have it kill someone than have to summon another zombie. You have Speechcraft to convince the people that you're good, or to talk to the undead, or both. No matter what, you need to talk to the undead, but if you want to be a good necromancer, the people will not believe you and you need to convince them otherwise. And with that, we bring ourselves to the maximum difficulty necromancer. The one to withstand all tests. You will be a Breton with the Atronox sign to give you as much resistance to magic as possible. Just like the role-playing necromancer, you will use magic and intelligence, but instead of willpower, you will be using endurance as your other attribute. Your seven skills are alchemy, blade, conjuration, heavy armor, marksman, restoration, and sneak. If you want to beat this game on the hardest difficulty, you have to go outside the major skills and also include illusion in this, and armorer. But let's get down to it. You need alchemy. Anytime you go for max build, max level, alchemy is a staple of any build. You need to be able to make poisons, because they aren't very, they aren't scaled. You also need to be able to heal yourself, and alchemy is a great way to produce potions for yourself. Blade's going to be your melee skill. You will, inevitably, have to go into some hand-to-hand -hand combat. You might as well not be completely useless there. Since you're a necromancer, you must be able to conjure undead and use them effectively. Either use them as meat shields or to deal main damage while you use your marksman skill and your sneak skill. Sneak around, stab people in the back, or sneak and use archery. I mean, sneaking and archery is the most overpowered combination in the game. And that's what you need for max level, except in the beginning of the game, you will be running out of arrows very frequently. Restoration is there to make sure that you don't spend extra magic summoning extra undead when you could have just been healing them all by yourself. Now the two extra skills I mentioned, armor, you must repair your heavy armor, and your blade, and your bow. Illusion is there for paralysis and command creature, as well as chameleon and invisibility. It synergizes well with all of these. You can paralyze someone, to have the undead and you deal extra damage. You can command undead for more meat shields, or you can make it so you have to fight one less undead at a time. 
and of course you have invisibility and chameleon for sneaking around. While this is not the most powerful build, it's still an extremely good build, and one that will be able to go very far in Oblivion if you max level it. That is how you become a necromancer. I have one more piece of advice for you, High Elf. But first, don't forget to love good, evil, it doesn't matter. Don't die.